When dinner time gets in, and your wife has made it clear, it's your turn to cook my dear. You have no need to fear. Make the dinner feed your spouse, bring peace into your house, you can make it. If you're lucky, she will say, and life will be okay. Life will be okay. You can make it. Welcome to another edition of You Can Make It. Today we're going to make maple pepper bacon sausage. What this is is replacement for bacon. It is made out of pork and it's going to be ground up like sausage. But it's going to be leaner than regular bacon. But it still needs some fat in it. So I have some pork blade shoulder roast and a little bit of fat left from trimming on some prior projects I did. About 10 to 15% fat is what you're looking for. So if you got a nice fatty roast, this is just extra fat. Because I bought a boneless pork roast, it's tied up. And I'll just cut the string off of it. Ah, that big chunks of fat are what I like to see. Now I take it back. It isn't boneless. They fooled me. There is a bone in there we're going to have to cut around. I've cut the shoulder bone out. There's a little bit of meat left on it. You can use it for stock or something if you want. I'm going to cut the rest of this meat up into cubes until I get four pounds of pork cubes because I'm going to be making four pounds or two kilos of sausage. You'll know I'm cutting the pork up into a couple of inch size squares, inch to an inch and a half, because that's what fits in the hopper of my grinder. It's important that it fits in the hopper of your grinder too. Now another thing you need to know about making sausages is it's important that you keep the meat cold at all times. So this meat's still cold to the touch from when I brought it out of the fridge. But as soon as I'm finishing cutting it up, then I'm going to get it back in the fridge while I proceed with the rest of the recipe. I've got my grinder set up with the smallest plate to get the finest grind I can on it. And I've got my hopper to stuff the meat in the hopper. I'm ready to go. So I'm going to fire the KitchenAid up and start grinding the pork. I'm just coming to the end, putting the last few pieces of pork in, and remember, as soon as it's done, it's going to go in the fridge, because meat has to be kept cold for sausage. We're going to be making up the seasonings and the curing mix to put in the pork to make it maple peppered bacon sausage. What we have here is six milliliters of prog powder number one, also known as Instacure number one, also known as pink salt, or a bunch of other names. It's basically salt, but it has a 6.4% of nitrite in the salt. That's what makes it bacon, gives it the pink color and the bacon taste. We also have 16 milliliters of kosher salt, 16 milliliters of cracked peppercorns, 12 milliliters of ground peppercorns, 80 milliliters of non-fat skim milk powder, and 120 milliliters of maple syrup. We're just going to mix all those together in preparation for putting it in the meat. I've got the maple syrup in the bowl to mix it up and I'm just going to add the rest of the ingredients. And we're going to mix it up into a bit of a slurry. It's time to mix the ingredients into the pork, which I've just taken out of the fridge because it's got to remain cold. And I'm going to put the pork on here to make it a bit easier to mix. I'm just going to put it out, push it out into a shape on the plate, make an indentation in the center, and put the slurry in it. I'm going to start mixing it now just by folding the pork into the center. Keep folding it into the center and then pushing it out flat again. Keep folding the edges in and pushing it out flat again. You want to do this for at least three minutes. You want to get as well mixed as you can. I've been mixing this by hand for three minutes. But you really want to make sure it's well mixed. So I'm going to finish it off 
in two batches by putting it in a bowl on the electric mixer with a paddle just to get it really mixed up well because you want the seasonings well spread throughout it. I removed the grinding attachment and I've put half the meat into the mixing bowl with the paddle attached. I'm going to give it just a couple of minutes on medium speed to make sure it's really well mixed up. I actually only took a minute for it to get really quite mi uh, mixed and emulsified. So I'm just going to take this half out and do the same thing to the other half of the pork mixture. You'll see how it's a lot more uniform in color and that is good. I've got all the pork done. I did the second half of it because it all fit in my bowl. I'm just going to put it all back in the bowl now and put it in the fridge because it's got to stay cold. But while it's in the fridge, I'm going to take a little piece of it off. And we're going to do what they call a fry test to make sure the seasonings are right. While the sausage is getting really nice and cool in the fridge, we're going to do a fry test. The purpose of a fry test is to find out if you got the seasonings the way you like. If there's not enough pepper, not enough maple, you can add a bit more. Or if the seasonings are way over the top, you could even grind up some more pork in to mild them up. Generally though, you want the recipe to be pretty close. But we're going to try the fry test, and I'm just going to take that little piece of pork we left behind and throw it in the fry pan. It's been heated up a bit, and we're going to cook it through. The fry test is complete and the pork's cooked through, so we're just going to take the pieces off here and give them a try. Mmm. Bill, give it a try. Oh, definitely. Oh, absolutely wonderful. Mmm. -hmm. Now it's when I'm going to make my sausage into sort of a breakfast strip. This is a technique I learned from a guy on the www.smokingmeat forums called Bear Carver. Uh, bear makes his sausages without any skins, puts them like this and then slices them up, and I'm going to use it to make breakfast strips out of my maple peppered bacon sausage. So we'll start off by taking a casserole dish that's the size and shape that you like the thickness and length of your sausage in, and then you want to line it with en enough plastic wrap to fold over the top and then you put the meat in there now you want to press it down as hard as you can you want to get as much air bubbles and whatever out of it as you can but you're always going to have some left in it so don't be a fanatic about it, but press it in nicely and firmly. And then take the remaining wrap and put it over the top and press it right against it because you want no air to get on the top of it if you can. And it will just sit like this in the fridge overnight. Here we are in the second day of making our maple pepper bacon sausage and we've had a slight change of weather which is the risk of living in the mountains. But don't worry, we intend to forge ahead. I'm going to put the loaf on the racks to smoke now and if you remember correctly we covered them with cellophane so we want to just peel the top layer of cellophane off, put the wire rack on it and turn the whole thing over. Pull the loaf out and take the rest of the cellophane off. It's ready to smoke. Or to make the world's biggest burger. Only Bill would think that. It's important that you cook your sausage to the right internal temperature so it's uh, safe to eat. I've hooked up a thermometer that gives me the internal temperature and the temperature of my smoker through this device. 
It's called a Maverick thermometer. If you don't have one of these, you at least need an instant read thermometer so that you can test it once in a while because you want to get the internal temperature to 155 degrees Fahrenheit to make it safe to eat cold. It's time to put the sausage in the smoker. I'm using my Bradley smoker which uses uh, flavor pucks. With the amount of smoke it gives out I'll be giving it about three hours over smoke but I'll be generally increasing the temperature longer than that. I have it preheated to 150 degrees Fahrenheit and it's going to be a very slow long cook slowly increasing the temperature. By the way if you don't have a smoker you can do this in the oven by using the same temperatures we're using you'll get the bacon it just won't be smoky. The sausage has been in the smoker for an hour at 150 degrees and the internal temperature of the meat is 74 degrees that's all Fahrenheit. Now I'm going to kick the temperature after an hour to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Our second hour in the smoke has gone by and the internal temperature of the meat is according to my thermometer now 96 degrees Fahrenheit so we're getting there. We're going to crank the heat up from 160 to 170 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay the sausage has been in here for three hours over smoke. As I say with this particular smoker that's all the smoke flavor I want. You can put it more or less to your taste but I've used three hours. It's now got to have the temperature increased to 180 degrees but because I'm doing it without smoke I'm going to take it inside and finish it in the oven because there's no point in heating up the great outdoors on a cold snowy day I'll do it in the oven. Now you may wonder why we're doing it at 10 degree increments every hour like this. It's because when you cook sausage it's really critical the fat doesn't rend out of it. You want it to stay in the sausage and by slowly increasing the temperature you increase the amount of fat that will stay in the sausage and make a nice moist sausage. I taken the sausage out of the smoker and put it in the oven for an hour 180 degrees, an hour 190 degrees and it took about two hours at 200 degrees to get the internal temperature of the sausage up to 155 degrees Fahrenheit. I've just taken it out of the oven, I'll let it cool down until it's safe to go in the fridge so it's cool to the touch and then I'll put it in the fridge overnight and I'll cut it tomorrow. We're on the last day of making our maple pepper bacon sausage. The sausage had sat overnight in the fridge wrapped in cellophane to let the flavors marry throughout it and to set up solid. Now I'm just going to slice it, put it in the freezer. So you could slice this what, thick or thin? You can slice this any way you like. I like about an eighth of an inch so it crisps up. My buddy Bill, who I also made a loaf for, likes it about a quarter of an inch thick. I think that looks more like a meatloaf, but it's the way he likes it. And he likes to eat it cold as a snack as well as cooking it. So you can do whatever you want with it. I like it sliced thin like bacon. Tasty, tasty meatloaf. Now that I've got the sausage all sliced up to fry, I put it in packages about eight because that's how much the wife and I will eat in one sitting. So I want to put enough in that I can just pull one out of the fridge. I just wrap it up in the cellophane. And then I put it all in a big bag to go into the freezer. So let's try our bacon sausage. You'll note it cooks very quickly. Ooh, that sounds good. Okay, we've tried it up. Let's give it a try. Bill, you go first. Definitely so. It looks delicious. Mmm, absolutely wonderful. So mm. you can eat this cold though, because it's cooked. You can eat it cold, it's way better hot like this. And you can make it. When dinner time gets here, you can make it, you can make it. And your wife has made it clear. You can make it, you can make it. It's your turn to cook, my dear. You can make it, you can make it. You have no need to fear. You can make it, you can make it. Make the dinner feature spouse, bring peace into your house. You can make it. If you're lucky, she will say. We will make it, we will make it. And life will be okay. Life will be okay. You can make it.